I've seen my brother physically, Danny, four times since I was out of prison, I mean. I'm on about out of prison. So out of prison, I've seen Daniel physically about four times in the last two decades. You know, they were placing me in custody for six months without any evidence and then acquitting me at court and releasing me. And I'd get released and then Danny would go into court without any evidence and then he'd get acquitted and... And then before, you know, we just got long ones. Then when we was in the system together, I hadn't seen Danny for over 16 years. Still haven't seen him now, so add another five to that, 16, 21. And that's what the system can do to you, you know, when you become like a recidivist family, like a family that's a little bit... They just crumble you down, break you down. But you still hear people talking about us. You still hear people screaming about Darren and Danny G on how dangerous we was back in the day and all the palaver. Do you understand what I mean? But that's like an example of how vibrations work, how the ripple effect works. Do you understand what I mean? So if you think about when me and Daniel was out. I think me and Daniel had a duration of about like consistent freedom together to move together, to get together about 23 months. And in them three, in them 23 months, Liverpool hadn't seen nothing like it. Nothing. And listen, I'm not, I'm not just, I'm not sitting here bigging this up. I'm not just trying to make myself something out that I weren't. I don't sit here proclaiming to be this big crazy importer. But the people around me was. I don't sit there proclaiming to be this arms dealer or this big, you know, mafia or cartel or whatever. We were just game kids. Off of the state with nothing. Two brothers talk this. That's what we was. It was the papers and the police that made us a lot more notorious than what we was. If they would have just treated us like the other kids off the, the estates they were terrorising. Not publicising every raid. Not throwing a G name across the front page for over a decade every other day. And I'm not lying. You've only got to go and pump Darren G into the Liverpool Echo. And look how many headshots they've gone since about 1997. You've been on me since a kid. Do you understand what I'm saying? But back in the day, when me and Daniel were active, when me and Daniel were together, people were getting seriously hurt. And people hadn't seen that type of violence before. You've seen loads of it later on. You've seen loads of individuals participating in all crazy types of violence, kidnaps, tortures, so on and so forth. But we were on that ball when we were kids. We were doing that to the likes of the Snarlies grafters. You know, we weren't... We didn't give a shit anyone. You know, you've got to think about, like, what Danny's done. Danny's done some crazy shit. Danny's went one level further. I'm in jail for offensive weapons and I'm with this girl called Kate Gilday. And here Daz, <whistles> number one in Liverpool before he died, you're on it. And when he left, there was a power surge. But anyway, I'm in jail for these offensive weapons that Kate had got on me from Spain. You know, knuckle dusters and all this. I've come out of here, I was walked down the street, being arrested, being given six months for these offensive weapons, yeah. I'm only young. Whilst I'm in jail, I don't know what's happened. Danny's give. Kate Gilday's younger sister. A right hook. 
messy. I think it was the no, it was definitely Danny. So imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine the what the f <laughs> crazy, isn't he? But that's Danny for you, you know, it? Thinking something of the uh Kate being having an affair or something. <laughs> but you know, we had people and we'd batter them with curb flags. You know, a flag on your curb. You know, when you come out of your house and you've got them concrete slabs. People were getting hips shattered with them. Now, look, I'm not bigging it up. I'm not condoning it. I'm just giving you, like, a little idea of... how dangerous two brothers can become. And how easy it is for the system to absolutely destroy them. Do you understand what I'm saying, people? Now, we would have had the right parents, and we would have had the right guidance, the right environment to be raised in, instead of it all violent and messy and poisonous. Instead of, that, instead of us putting our heads together in crazy and crime and violence and whatever, we would have put our heads together in a proper way, wouldn't we? And we would have been extra powerful, wouldn't we? That's what I'm saying to the boys. All is, you think you're powerful, you think you're, you think you're part of this next level from generation, but you're not really, you know, kid. The kid that's down there just making legit dough into his bank every month, <laughs> stacking it. Every month it's getting bigger. Every month he's got a little nest egg to put into something else. They're the kids that's smashing it, lad. They're the kids that's on the next level. They're the kids that are elevating in life. Not you, drug dealers. You were dragging your whole family tree through generations of complete... If it goes wrong for you. You might be smashing the graft in the city for ten years, but you're always going to get a new one popping up. <laughs> Wanting to have a little bite of your cake that you've had a hold on for so long. You're always going to get someone from the next generation wanting a bite of your... And it goes off. And then before you know it's someone's killed and your whole family just goes gets destroyed loyalties 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 just be careful be careful you're backing up be careful who you give your loyalty to. Don't give it to anyone. It's earned. You shouldn't be all of a sudden getting around a mate who your mates have been talking about. You've been around them for a month or two months or three months, then all of a sudden you're loyal. He hasn't shown you any sort of, you know, indications that he's loyal to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? He hasn't given you any sort of indication that he's backed you to the hilt. Ignore when they're backing you in an argument against your bed and the support on you. She's mad here, lad. Having a little shout in there. That's not loyalty. That's not supporting you, bro. If you're sitting there thinking you've got a proper loyal friend, a loyal friend in the true context and form of the words would not let you enter any type of dangerous situation where you could risk your freedom, risk your safety, or risk your life. No one. Some of you have got friends, swear that, lad. Come away from that. And you go, no, I'm going, I'm going. Sensible one. The one that's just looking at what's going on and going, you know what, take a step back from that, kid. Trust me. Don't go there. But you're caught up. Majority of you are on that fezzy thing as well, aren't you? Oh, I want to go with a fezzy. Caught up in that life.
Now look, I'm not blanking these comments on purpose. I can see the Kalnach there, because it's massive, Danny Wright. Well done, bro. Stay on my lonely family, man, nowadays. Go on, mental. Claire, how are you? You always hear these old schoolers saying, you come into this world alone, you go out of this world alone, you need to believe in what you're doing and understand that the people around you are out to make you fall. And then you sit there like that, overanalyze. Don't overanalyze it. You know, it's simple. Just assess who you're being loyal to. That's what this is about. This is about loyalty. I know I might have went left and right a little bit, but I've always brought it back to that powerful word of loyalty. And is loyalty a good thing? You know, is loyalty as powerful as people make it out to be? You get people getting tattoos saying loyalty to this and loyalty to that. But loyalty works both ways, as I've just been explaining. You know, you get fans that are loyal to athletes who they've never met. But is that athlete loyal to you? And that's the way you've got to look at anyone that's in your life. You know, you look at them. You're willing, you're stood there, woman or man, willing and have been 100% loyal to this individual. Can you categorically state, whilst you're sat there now looking at that individual, that you can trust them to be 100% loyal back. Can you or can't you? If you can't, simple maths. If you can, make sure he's earned it and not taking it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ignore your little gang where you've all got this mindset that you're loyal with each other. The majority of you gangs now have got kids mixing in them that should not be mixing in any sort of criminal network or organisation. Why? A couple of reasons, but the main one is the minute they get placed in the cell and get pressured off the mum and dad, it's over. You aren't even moving right as gangs anymore, just so you've got numbers. Doesn't matter how much risk you're getting placed under by these huge numbers. You just want numbers. Because that's the way the world works now. Strength in numbers. Everyone looks at that shout, strength in numbers. But you've got to understand that always and always will be people who control the masses so it doesn't matter how many numbers they've got they can have thousands upon thousands upon thousands but i will guarantee you there's a triangle sat somewhere around a table controlling them all and what do i mean by a triangle i mean three people him him and him controlling all them thousands So it's not really strength in numbers, is it? You think about it. It's all about protecting oneself, isn't it? Bring it right back to loyalty. I've been loyal to people who are not blood more than people who was blood in my life. Why? Because I've seen them people, I've seen them move and act and protect me with their loyalty more than my brothers have. Do you understand? So I've had him come who hasn't been loyal, asking me to go through this door. He's been off. Why? Because he's never been loyal, so I'm not being loyal to you. You got yourself in this, yourself out. Brother or no brother, you're moving like a rat. Get dealt with like a rat. My man, 
been in my life since we were a kid. It's not blood. She's never slept under the same roof. Well, all your main men have slept under the same roof with you at some point, haven't they, boys? You know what I mean. My man there, I haven't even asked him to do He's gone out and done for when people have done something to me. My man's just gone out on himself, dealt with someone. That's showing me loyalty. He's earning my loyalty, this kid. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then you get them labels, brother from another mother, sister from another mister, and all this stuff. Is it good? Don't know. Is what good, I hear you say? Is it good that within today's society you can't trust your blood as much as you could years ago? I'll nip it in a nutshell and we'll move on. We'll touch another top. But what I'll keep on saying to you, mate, choose a life, not a knife. Understand that loyalty is just as powerful as trust and respect. It's on the same level. Trust is earned, respect is earned, and so is loyalty. If you want it to last, if you want it to turn to powerful love, long-lasting, make sure you've earned it. Don't think you can take them morals off individuals and it'll last. Because it doesn't. And everyone will tell you. You see all these big people who come into the heart trusting everyone, thinking everyone's their mates, they end up on their arse a little bit and then bang, all them people disappear. And you see it over and over again. You see celebrities, you see the main heads on your streets, you see, you know, life goes on, life continues. It doesn't stop just for you. Time doesn't stop for no one. It doesn't matter where you sat doing it. I advise that you're best doing it within the confines of freedom that we've got, instead of in the confines of a cell where how can people in prison try to come across like prisons comfortable? And they put it out there as if prison's comfortable. And when the police round up three or four of the boys off one estate and they're in custody and then another kid gets nicked and he goes in custody and his boys are in there, he gets made to feel comfortable. So when you're going to jail, really, if you're one of the boys, if you're one of the boys of a boy or whatever and whatever, you're getting looked after. You're getting made sure that you're comfortable. If, if there's no quilts in there and there's shitty blankets, but the boys have got a quilt, you're getting a quilt. So, you know, you're getting comfortable in there straight away. You're not really feeling... You're not really feeling the harsh conditions of what prison can be like if you weren't being supported by the same network of individuals that sort of encourage you to participate in that way of life in the first place. Does that make sense? So, for example... If you was going into custody and you was stripped of all your ill-gotten gains and you went into prison, you should be wearing prison clothes. You should have prison shoes on. You be, should be in a regime what's not comfortable. You should be feeling the harsh conditions of prison. At the moment, people are getting in prison and they can bear with it. They can live with it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not, it's not really terrifying me. I'll go there, I'll get a little computer for a few years. Still get me phones. Stack me dogs so when I got out I can do what I boom. That's the mentality these days. As I keep saying, the most worst thing in prison is the boredom. And if you get bored very easy, don't go to prison. <laughs> Simple as that. And I don't know many people that are not getting bored very easily these days. Anyway, loyalty, we've all got it. We've got it in abundance, certified, uh, blind, loyal. You know, you learn of your mistakes. You only learn with age, trust me. 
when you've had people that's going through the life you've been through who has put their loyalty in individuals who have put your life at risk, you've got to understand how precious your loyalties are. Don't be loyal to Tom, Dick and Harry, trust me. Don't respect every Tom, Dick and Harry and don't trust every Tom, Dick and Harry. Give it to the people that earn it. You're not daft, you're not stupid. You know what actions are positive. You know what actions are gonna benefit you and not hinder you. The people that are doing stuff and it's coming to light, they're the people you should be giving your trust to. They're the people you should be investing your energy with. These people that are just, you're not stupid. That's loyalty. It's okay to be loyal to the ones that have earned it. Don't ever be loyal to anyone that's bullied you. Don't ever be loyal to them that intimidate you. Don't ever be loyal to them that would never, ever, ever be loyal to you. Ever. Try and be a shepherd. Not a lamb. <laughs> so it is what it is, people. It's a little power hour again, talking about loyalty. I hope some of the boys can listen to this. Because you're all loyal bastards, aren't you? Just like me. Loyal's blind. Get you in serious trouble. Get you in serious danger. Can get your life taken. Can get your life off. Can have you doing would never have done in your life if you would have known the true outcome of that man's character, of that man's morals. Why? Because you never assessed it properly in the beginning. You can't blame that lad for getting you lifed off. You should have assessed him properly. You can't blame him for getting you nicked. You should have assessed it properly. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everyone you let into your life that may bring that dangerous element into it. You should have assessed them properly. Think about who you're being loyal to. Think about who you're mixing with. Think about who you're letting into your life. Trust me on it. Peace out, L5, shall count the cook.